Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Myth Busting. In today's episode we are going to be investigating the Silverfish Spawner. It has been brought to my attention by a friend that the Silverfish Spawner actually has some special properties about it that I was completely unaware of. Now when it comes to the spawners there are two things that I know. Some mobs require light level 7 or lower like the skeleton or the zombie and some require 11 like the blaze and that was the main difference that I knew when working with spawners. However, with Silverfish Spawner, that being the one you find by the end portal, there are actually some additional properties. And in this episode, we're going to test, show, and prove that they exist. And we're going to start off by creating a new world and finding ourselves a stronghold with a Silverfish Spawner. Just in case you've never seen it before, here is the Silverfish Spawner. It's located in the stronghold at the entrance to the end portal. Now the reason that we're using this spawner is because I wanted to use a legitimate one rather than create one in a test world. So what we've got to do right now is actually turn this into a little bit of a testing facility. So I'm going to remove the blocks around here and get this thing set up for a test. The first thing we'll be testing is the light levels which the Silverfish spawn in. The room has been set up and it's ready for testing. What we've got in the middle is a glass grid above the spawner right here so we can see all the places that the silverfish can spawn and then around the outside we have some barrier blocks leading down to the bottom here. Now what we're going to do is create a column of glowstone inside the spawnable area. That means the light level right here is 15 inside the block then next to it will be 14 then 13 then 12 and so on and that way when we place these down we'll be able to calculate the light levels inside the entire spawnable area because this is going to be the only light source that's in this area so that way we'll be able to calculate what light levels these silverfish spawn in. So I'm going to overlay an image on the screen this is going to show you what the light levels are inside the spawnable area you can see there is a strip of 11 down the middle and that's what we have right here I've already seen the silverfish spawning in the middle there but right now we're on peaceful so I'm going to switch back over to hard mode and then we're going to sit here and wait for a silverfish to spawn and it's going to spawn well, that was perfect, you saw three of them spawn right there, all of them in the middle. So just in case it wasn't clear, I did test that for a while to make sure they only spawned in the middle, which they did, and now we have no spawns at all. That's because I've moved in the glowstone on either side. So now you can see with the overlaid image that the lowest light level in there is 12, and that confirms that they can only spawn in light level 11 or lower. But of course there is an exception to this rule and that's exactly why we're making this video. Let's see what happens when I place some stone below the spawner. Straight away you saw there a silverfish spawn. This seems to override the rule. You can see this guy is now able to spawn and it poses two questions. First of all, what light level can they spawn in if there's stone below? And also how low below does the stone need to be? So there's two tests here to find out but as you can see the silverfish can spawn on stone and it seems that they can ignore the light levels. So with this configuration the only place they can spawn is where there's a light level of 14 and I've observed something very interesting happening here. The silverfish only ever seem to spawn in one of these places one time. So they started off with the places in the middle and the spawn rates are very low and now they're making their way to the spaces on the outside which has made me suspect that perhaps they can spawn on stone but they can't spawn on stone that has a silverfish inside of them because as you saw there after a moment they go inside of the block. So that's another thing to test but we've seen there that it does override the light levels so the next thing to test is how far up or down the stone has to be for the silverfish to spawn on top of them. So I've raised the stone up by one level and the silverfish are spawning. The rates are very slow so we might not see it here. But you can see I've raised it up by one and we're going to do one more and see if they can spawn on that top layer. So there we go, we've got one spawning in right there. They can spawn at this top level as well which is good to know. So now the next thing to test is the levels below the spawnable area. Well this is good news for me because if they were spawning on this stone right here that would probably mean I'd have a lot of testing to do to see how far down they can actually spawn above the stone. But it would seem like within the free height area around the spawner that they can spawn if there is a stone block below then they're going to be able to spawn on that because as soon as we move it down by one we've got no silverfish spawns whatsoever. So now I guess the next question is to find out what types of stone block they can actually spawn on. So I think it's very likely that they're going to be able to spawn on stone, we already know that, cobblestone and then the stone brick variants because these ones have a, a block in the creative menu which already has the silverfish inside of it. Now as well as that we've also got the new variants, we've got granite 
and Durite and Andesite. So we're going to test these ones as well. And I've already done Granite and the result is interesting. You can see here the silverfish will spawn on top of it, but then they can't go inside of the block and disappear, which is interesting. So I'm going to test all of those blocks and then I'm going to let you know the results. Well, I have some interesting information for you, which is why we do these videos and these tests. The only block they can spawn on is stone and the variants right here. So these ones they can spawn on top of, but they can't go inside. And stone they can spawn on top of and go inside. They can't spawn on top of cobblestone. I also tested mossy cobblestone as well and all of the stone brick variants right here. And I even tested these ones over here, these stone monster eggs. They cannot spawn on top of any of them. So it's simply just stone or the block ID 1 and its variants that these guys can spawn on top of. And there is one more piece of information I have for you about this silverfish spawner. Below us there are stone blocks and we are in hard difficulty mode, yet nothing is spawning. And that's because there is another rule that says if there is a player within five blocks of the spawnable space, then it's not going to be able to spawn. So if we fly up here, instantly you'll see a silverfish spawns down below. If I am to stand on this edge over here, then they're not going to spawn close to me, they're going to spawn over on that side and at the moment I'm struggling to decide whether this is a five block square around the player or a five block radius which would create a spherical shape. So I've changed up the test, I've put my field of view in Quake Pro and I've removed all of the glowstone because that has nothing to do with the range from the player and the only time the silverfish ever spawn is in one of the corners over here and that would suggest that it's actually a five block radius creating a sphere around the player. If we are to fly up you can see I've built a sphere out of glass up the top here so this is roughly like what the range is like so you can see over on the corners here if we were to drop down we would be in the corner of that area which would comply with the results that we've seen from this test. So there you have it, silverfish can override the light levels if they are going to spawn on top of a stone block and also they won't spawn within 5 blocks of a player which is very good stuff to know, maybe very useful if you plan on building yourself a silverfish farm. But that's going to be it from me at this episode of Myth Busting. If you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like, it's always appreciated and be sure to check out the Myth Busting playlist if you haven't seen more of these videos before. I've answered many, many questions before but you can always ask one down there in the comment box. But that's it from me, so as always thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.